Hello, Anuski fifth graders. Today we continue reading Mac B. Kids by the Impossible Crime by Mac Barnett. Remember, Mac and Hallcroft were tasked by the Queen of England to guard the crown jewels from a suspected jewel thief. And Mac had first guard duty when... Chapter 11, an important lesson... As you probably know, counting stones is boring. On stone 223, I fell asleep. Chapter 12. Robbery! Robbery! Wake up. Oh, wake up. Hallcroft was shaking me hard. I opened my eyes. You fool. Hallcroft shouted, You nitty. You oaf! What? I said, Hallcroft, what's wrong? You fell asleep. I checked my watch. Just for a few minutes. That was enough. I took a look at the table. The crown jewels were gone. I scrambled to my feet. We must look for clues. There's no time, Hallcroft said. We have to give chase. He ran to the cell door. It was locked. Cripes, he shouted. We're trapped in a shell. Hallcroft rattled the bars and shouted into the dark, The crown jewels are stolen! The crown jewels are stolen! Chapter 13 The Impossible Crime The Queen of England was unhappy. Mac fell asleep, said Hallcroft. Yes, said the Queen. This is very disappointing, she thought for a second. However, this is very exciting. Mum, said Hallcroft. We are in the middle of a mystery, and not just a normal mystery, it's a how done it, said the Queen. Don't you mean a who done it? I said. Of course not, said the Queen. We already know who done it. Young blood done it. Oh, you mean did it? Please do not correct me, said the Queen. It's called the Queen's English for a reason. Um, okay, I said. We also y know young blood's motive. The queen waved the red letter around in the air. He wanted to get what his great 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 grandfather did not, and so it's not a why done it. Ah, said Holcroft. Quite so. It's not a who when done it. It was done just now while Mac was sleeping on the job. That was the criminal's opportunity. I'm sorry, I said. Thus, said the Queen, it's a how done it. We must figure out how young blood done what he done. How could he steal jewels from a cell without breaking the bars? It's an impossible crime. Not impossible, I said. Just really, really hard. The queen clapped her hands together. I simply love a locked room mystery. Me too, I said. I did. I still do. Oh, said the queen. Do you know any good ones? Yeah, I said. There's one in Paris where... I know it already, said the queen. The ape went up the chimney. Oh, I said. Well, there's one where this guy who builds all these rolls... He dressed up as a postman, said the queen. All right, I said. Do you know the one where the guy goes to the supermarket for two bottles of relish? That one is absolutely revolting, said the queen. It is my favorite. <gasps> okay, I said. Well, here's one I heard the other day. Police find a dead man in a locked room, hanged from the ceiling, with a rope around his... Cripes, said Holcroft. Seems a bit grim for a little boy, doesn't it? All this hanging... I don't know. I said, it's just a story. Everyone at school does these riddles at recess all the time. Hallcroft was aghast. Most adults don't have any idea of what happens on playgrounds. You probably already know that's true without looking it up. Oh, let him get on with it, said the Queen of England. Police find a dead man in a locked room, hanged from the ceiling with a rope around his neck. The ceiling in this room is 20 feet high, which, you know, is very high. Sounds like a normal ceiling to me said the Queen of England. Many of the rooms in my house are at least 20 feet tall. Well, anyway, the police can't figure out how the guy got up there. Then the detective notices a puddle of water on the floor. I know what happened, the detective says. What happened? shouted the Queen. Oh, what happened? Don't you want to figure it out yourself? 
I asked the queen. No, said the queen. It's more fun if you try to figure it out, I said. Just tell me the answer. Okay, I said. The man stood on a giant block of ice to hang himself, and then it melted. Ah, said the queen. Excellent. Oi, how do you do that, said Holcroft. What? How do you get up on the block, said Holcroft. Pretty tough to scramble up a 15-foot ice cube. I'd heard this riddle a hundred times and never thought of that. Well, I said, uh, maybe there were steps carved into the ice blocks? Steps? said Holcroft. Yeah, maybe like it was an ice staircase? Holcroft rolled his eyes. Oh, yes, of course, an ice staircase. Yeah, I said, uh, maybe the guy was an ice sculptor. Holcroft blew a raspberry. <laughs> I shook my head. You don't get it. You're right. I, I don't get it. It's just a riddle, I said. Right, your majesty? Indeed, said the queen. But what occurred last night is a real life locked room mystery. It actually happened. I must know the solution. Okay, I said. I looked back around the cell. Let me think. I cannot wait around while you think, said the queen. I have to know now. Just get to the answer. From who, I said. I think you mean from whom, said the queen. From young blood, of course. Go get him, arrest him, and make him tell how he did it, and fetch back my jewels while you're at it. Go get him where, I said. I told you yesterday, the queen said. The king of England gave the bloods a land in Ireland. Go, Holcroft, ready the helicopter. Uh, but, mum, Holcroft said. I can do this myself. You are working together. Remember, teamwork and cooperation. Ah, uh, but I said, if I could just search the cell for some clues. Mac, said the queen, you are not a detective. You are a secret agent. So stop looking for clues and go sneak into another country to nab a bad guy. Uh, but, said Holcroft, the queen frowned and cleared her throat. Goo, said the queen, that is an order. Yes, mum, said Holcroft. And off we went. Chapter 14. Hot Pursuit. This is England, and this is Ireland. Ireland is a country with no snakes and lots and lots of castles. The big reason Ireland has so many castles is that it is an island, and islands tend to attract invaders. Castles are a very good way to repel invaders. Over the centuries, Ireland has been invaded by the English, the Vikings, the Normans, the English again, and uh, again the English. And lots of Americans who are part Irish want to visit, like me. There's a story about why Ireland does not have any snakes. The story is that a bunch of snakes swarmed a man named St. Patrick while he was thinking under a tree, and he got so mad that he drove all the snakes in Ireland into the ocean. Uh, this story is not true, but St. Patrick got his own holiday anyway. You can look that up. The big reason Ireland doesn't have any snakes is that it is an island, and although snakes are excellent invaders, they cannot sail boats or fly helicopters. Our helicopter flew in the darkness over the sea. I looked down and saw dark green pastures dotted with horses, dark green fields dotted with barley, and dark green lawns dotted with castles. Holcroft landed the helicopter on a castle's front lawn. There we are. Holcroft said. We walked up some steps to the castle's huge entrance. I wiped my feet on a gigantic doormat. Pardon, Holcroft said, and nudged me aside. He lifted a corner of the doormat and pulled out a gigantic keyring. A plunk of out of town, he said. They told Her Majesty the Queen we could stay at the castle. He unlocked the front door. It creaked on its hinges. The plunkets, I said. Baron and Baroness Plunkett own Dunsey Castle. Uh, I know those sound like fake names, uh, but they're not. You can look it up. The castle was empty and damp and too big. Moonlight shone weakly through tall, peaked windows. This place is creepy, I said. It's convenient, Holcroft said. A blood land is nearby. Get some rest. We'll go get young blood in the morning. The wind moaned as it passed through a high tower. We're sleeping here, I said. It feels like it's haunted. A soldier can sleep anywhere, Holcroft said. Good night.
He climbed up a staircase and disappeared into a room. I searched the castle for a good place to sleep. I didn't like the look of a bed in one room, and the grandfather clock in another looked a little bit suspicious. I settled on sleeping in the library. I always feel safer surrounded by books. I still do. It was a great red room with thick velvet drapes and an oversized fireplace. I looked out the windows and thought I saw shadows move in the fog. Did young blood know we were here? Was he coming to stop us? I pulled the drapes closed and locked the door to the room. I turned on the lamp. What I saw made me scream. And we will find out what that is next week on McBee Kid Spy. I will talk to you then, Winooski fifth graders.